Hello from California, this is Sandy from Messy Paper Crafts and today I have a card making tutorial for you because if you watched my unboxing video with the products by All and Create then you might have seen the ephemera pieces from Janet Klein and I thought they would be really cute together with the style of Carable Studio because Kate Crane, she is one of the designers who creates great stamps for Carable Studios, but also she creates these jelly printing plates. And I just love the style from Kate Crane. She has this really quirky style and very colorful makes, and especially for art journaling and cards and so on. And if you look at these cards right now, so some of them have this kind of stitched etched look <laughs> and others I just used a stamp because to be honest I never saw anything in my life before this card making tutorial. But yeah, that's just the style that Kate Crane has in a lot of her makes. So I thought it would be fun to copy that. However, I wanted to focus more on backgrounds in this tutorial. So I thought I just use the ephemera just because it's this quirky style of Janet Klein and it works really nicely together. So yeah, here you see All in Create meets Carable Studio. And here you get now a closer look to these products. And yeah, hopefully you agree. So the Kate Crane style is this yeah, quirky doodling style. And if you don't really want to stamp something down, then these ephemera pieces, they are great. And yeah, here you can see now how I lay them all out because I had this package on my table for a while and I really wanted to play with them. But at the same time, they're a little bit small. So I think for a smaller art journal or maybe an artist trading card, they would be fantastic. However, I'm usually more into card making. So that's why I kind of thought it would be fun to have a great background and then also to use these ephemera pieces all together. And here you have a closer look now on these printing plates. The one is a little older and the next one, this one, that's called Mix and Match and that's a new one by Kate Crane. And I love crafting on this Tim Holtz mixed media mat. So here we set up now the gel press and the alcohol ink, which I will use for the background. And yeah, I love this technique of the jelly press or this jelly plate and alcohol ink because you get really crisp results. And I'm just taking out colors at the moment where I'm thinking, okay, once the gel plate is out, then usually I try to create lots and lots of different prints. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe I use at first just the colors in the same spectrum so that you don't create any mud. So you don't really want to create something that has, I don't know, like purple and yellow together because then you would create brown. So you don't want anything muddy. However, here I'm just thinking, okay, these would work nicely together in the reddish and orange color family. And then here we have more pool and lighter blues. And here it's now a little bit bolder with purple and red, but it really depends on you. But I kind of feel that the bolder the color, the easier you will see the print later. However, if it's a lighter print and you just have a little bit of texture, then that can be nice, nice as well. So this is now my Jelly Arts Press and I just put this baking paper underneath just so that you can see it easier and then I also don't have to clean up so much later. So that just protects a little bit the mat and less cleaning. I just ditch this uh, baking paper later. And here I also have now my paper that's just normal smooth white uh, cardstock, 65 pounds because I don't really want it too thick because I want to layer this onto my card and otherwise it just would be too bulky. Here we have now paint. So you can really play around with different paint. I really like this one, Amsterdam Titan Buff acrylic paint because it makes these prints a little bit vintage. And because I work with alcohol inks, I don't want that on my skin because alcohol inks, it can be quite toxic. So I'm using gloves and also I have a purifier on, on really high volume and my window is wide open because you want to work in a well ventilated area. Otherwise, it's not so bad because these inks, they dry really quickly on this gel plate. So here I'm just putting some down so it won't smell for a long time. So I'm not using a respirator or anything right now just because I'm not blowing them around. So they don't really become airborne. 
I just put some on in the same color family and now I'm just using my Tim Holtz sprayer and I'm smoothing them out. And the jelly plate looks a little bit white, however there's nothing else on the jelly plate underneath, so that's just white because of this baking paper. And here I'm just pressing these plates down and then you can see that the color was lifted from the design of these plates and it's now on the plate. And now you just have to make sure that the alcohol ink is completely dry before you start using the paint. So the paint you need, just because the alcohol ink dries so quickly, you need now something to activate this print and just with a really thin layer. So you can see that I don't really use a lot. I actually still want to see the design of this printing plate underneath. So that still looks through. And I'm just making sure that it's really smooth because otherwise if it's too much or if you don't really smooth out the paint and you try to lift it now with the paper, then you will just see the paint or just clumping of paint. So here I'm using now a tool that I usually just use for my stamping just to make sure to get a good stamping impression. And obviously you can smooth out the paper with your hand or here with your brayer. Just with my hand it doesn't really work at the moment because I have these gloves on so I need something to smooth out the paper without that the gloves are sticking on it. And here you have now the first print, yay! <laughs> and I just think it's such a great idea with alcohol ink and these plates because when you use too much acrylic paint and then you use these text plates, which you could, you can also use these text plates with ink, you can use them with Tim Holtz ink, so you can use them with acrylics. However, you don't really get this crisp impression because a lot of time any other than alcohol ink might be too thick. And the thicker the medium, obviously the more difficult it is to see a detailed print. And here I just love it because you can just play with different colors. You can also obviously use different paint on top and then you get a different impression. But with this Titan buff color, this beige, you obviously get this more vintage look, but you could also use white. However, now if you saw there was still a little bit paint on the plate, so I'm just doing now another paint on top again, just to lift all of it from the plate. So now you can see the plate is pretty clean. So good enough to do the next alcohol ink. So now I'm just using different blue colors again and yeah, I just play around. Sometimes I have the more doodle design as my main print and other times I have the new mix and match plate as my main print. And there's really no right or wrong. So you could also use stencils, obviously. You can also use any stems that you have or any leaves or flowers and so on just to get an, an interesting imprint, so to speak, on the jelly plate. However, these plates, they are amazing because if you would use stems with a text, then this would be in reverse. So these plates, they're already designed that, yeah, that they look really good on the gel plate and just look at this detail and that's why I love these alcohol inks so much because they just give you this incredible detail. And it's really fun to just yeah play around with different colors and here we yeah as I said we will stick to one color family for now just so that we don't create some weird colors. However, in a little bit, you will also see that alcohol ink is very forgiving. So it's not like watercolor where they immediately run into each other and create mud, especially if you would use now purple and yellow, for example, that would be immediately brown if you would use watercolor. In alcohol ink, it's actually not so bad. However, yeah, just play around maybe first with the same family of colors so that you get really crisp results and then just go wild, just see what works for you. So here this is now called fake wallpaper or that's what I'm calling it. And it's a little bit of a different approach because this time I didn't really want to create a crisp result but more some kind of texture. So I already put one thin paint layer on and I'm just making sure now that it's really dry. And now I'm just yeah, creating different colors here and there. And as you can see, I don't really pay any attention of where they're going because as I said, alcohol ink is pretty forgiving. It doesn't really create mud immediately. And even though this looks a little bit like, uh, okay, what is she doing now? It's actually a really fun technique. So you just put down any color that you want and now I just put 
these texture plates on and they're really flexible so you can see I'm bending them here now here and there just to get this texture off and here I'm just doing now the same thing and obviously there is some alcohol ink already on the plate so that will also transfer back onto the gel plate and here I even put now more I think like orange on and yeah I just try to create this kind of yeah wallpaper look although at this moment in time I'm not 100% sure if that's successful however because of this titan buff yeah beige look I feel you can never go wrong with that because anything looks immediately a little bit vintage so same as before now I'm just making sure that this color is completely dry and go over yet again with another paint of color so now you have first a paint layer very thin then the alcohol ink then I pressed in these gel plates or these um, texture texture plates just to get this yeah create creative look and then I put on another paint layer and go over it and now you have to really massage it for maybe 30 seconds or more because now you have a lot of ink and paint on this gel plate so you want to make sure that you can pull all of this off at once so really take your time with these things because if you take it off too quickly you might not pull it all off and look at that I think this is so cool and yeah it just reminds me of some old 70s wallpaper and here we have now the results with all the different colors so here we have the ones that you just saw the bluish tints and the greenish tints and then I just played with some different colors for example more purple and more orange and as you can see with the bolder colors obviously you get a better print because it's just yeah white and bold obviously there's more contrast however I would still keep all the prints even the ones that you might not like so much because the print isn't that clear because later when you mix and match it together for your card maybe you are quite happy that there are some prints that are a little bit more subtle and here's a great background from the fake wallpaper so now we have a little bit of a problem because how do we make the ephemera stand out because obviously these backgrounds even in the same color family they're a little bit busy because that's what we wanted right <laughs> we wanted to create a background with great texture but as you can see the ephemera doesn't quite fit so now we go to the next background the background smushing so you might be familiar with that technique if you ever watched the Tim Holtz tutorial where he presents his oxide and inks and I'm doing something similar here except that you could use any watercolor like I said you could use Tim Holtz you can use um, watercolor pencils and yeah add water anything that's a fluid medium really because now I just want to create something for the ephemera so that it kind of has a better background and then I will use that background <laughs> for the background that we just created it will all make sense in a bit and here you see that I poured out a little bit too much watercolor so in the beginning I just thought I used one tag and now I had to get some more tags so these are just mixed media tags by Tim Holtz and I'm just absorbing here all the ink but in the end this was actually quite lucky because we already have now so many great gel plate backgrounds so now I also have a lot of yeah focal point backgrounds and so there yeah, I started a little bit of a mass production here so in the end it actually worked out really well because I did want to play with the ephemera and this way I had lots of um, gel plate backgrounds and now lots of foreground backgrounds and so in the first step here yeah I'm just absorbing this color and these yeah watercolor brush pencils they are from tonic but of course you can use any watercolor you could smash down Tim Holtz inks or maybe you have some watercolor pencils that you want to use or a palette or something so any watercolor is really fine I just went the easiest way because I already came here as a brush and now I just have to make sure that I dry these layers in between because if you have wet on wet mediums then they will just all blend together and it's easy to create mud however if you dry in between then you can add the next layer and this way you just add more interest so I go into the same color again just to add these little speckles 
and instead of blending all together with the wet color that was on it, now you can see the color was dry and now I just have more interest on the next layer. So Tim Holtz always says you're only as good as the next layer and that's really true here because you just want to add more interest. So here I just want even more dots and every time between I just make sure that it's not too wet so that they just layer on top of each of these tags. And of course you can play here with different color combinations and actually the ephemera is in this little can that you see there on the front of me where sometimes I look underneath and I just covered the ephemera pieces because usually I just have them open on the table but when I play with watercolor then it's really easy that they actually get messed up so here I just wanted to protect them with the lid of this can and still have them close to me so I can see the color that I want to achieve. So I thought it would be nice to have something maybe with a little bit green or a little bit blue or a little bit purple just to match them with the ephemera pieces. And I also try not to overthink anything because a lot of time I think yeah we get really critical with ourselves and we want this somehow perfect but Another thing that Tim Holt says a lot is that a background is just a background. If there is some kind of spot or dot that you don't really like later, there is something that you can stick on top of it or that's how you position your ephemera. So yeah, try not to overthink this process and just play with different watercolors and layers and yeah, just have fun with it. And here we have now the <laughs> mass production, so to speak. And I'm just playing around with the different compositions now of these ephemera pieces. And you see here once again that I changed my mind here and there because in the beginning I thought, okay, I might play with these pieces that I put out. And now obviously I have a lot more text where I have to create some more foregrounds for. So I just brought the ephemera pack back in and I'm just playing with these different pieces. So now we go to the next part where we want to decorate this tag a little bit more with stamping and maybe adding some gold and more contrast. So I'm using one of my most favorite stamp sets of all time. <laughs> That's from Vicky by Stamperia called Create Happiness. Here you can see it, what that looks like when it's fresh in the package. I just have these pieces loose on my table just because I'm using them all the time. And the quality of these stamps is fantastic. I mean, I don't even have to worry of using a Tim Holt stamping platform or Misty or something like that. I just put it onto this little acrylic plate and then I just know that every time I stamp down, it will look great. And here I'm just adding now another stamp from the same stamp set. So it looks like a little bit of a coffee stain, I guess. Or you can also do this if you have a bottle top and you just maybe dip this into paint then you can create something similar. And the whole idea here is just to play around to create a little bit more interest and more contrast. And if black isn't your thing, then of course you could also stamp here in a similar color to the watercolor that you used if you just want to stay tone on tone. Or here I just decided to add more contrast with black. And I'm using the Versafine Claire black ink because I believe this is oil based. It's definitely not water based. So if you would add now a little bit more watercolor for more speckles, then the black ink that wouldn't smush. So that will stay in place once it's dry. So yeah, just again a little bit of a different approach here because now that I added black, I also thought it would be nice to have some more golden Things so that it just looks a little bit yeah highlights with gold and then the black for more contrast and as I said before here you really don't have to worry too much about your background because if there's anything that you didn't like before then you could just uh, add here for example washi tape you can place your ephemera in a different way or you can maybe add some stickers or anything you have just to make it more interesting and Especially if there was an area that you didn't like, it's super easy to hide because that's, that's why I love mixed media. There's really no right or wrong and it's all about just having fun and playing with these different pieces. So here I just thought, okay, I have this flower and I don't want that it just floats somehow around on this card. 
So this ephemera piece is also from the Janet Klein package by All in Crate. So the flower is from there. And then these little, um, yeah, like bunting thingies, I think that's what it's called. So all of this is from the package. And then underneath, I just added more of the washi tape, just so that the eye has something to look at, that the flower somehow makes sense to stand on top of there. And now we have this washi tape and then also a sentiment. And this way it just doesn't float. So it kind of has a, yeah, a place to be there. I kind of feel it's a bit more grounded. So now we go back to the backgrounds and have to see how this all gets together. And once again, you can play here with different colors. You can stay in the same color family or maybe you want an opposite color. So yeah, there's once again no right or wrong. I think here it would have also been cool if I had more of a purple background. However, I decided on this blue gel plate background but now I have to see, okay, on which card do I want that? So I decided to have more of a yeah, pinkish purple card base and then to have the bluish gel plate print on top of that and then the background that we just created. I could have also gone a whole different route. This gel plate background could have been maybe a stronger color so then it would have been more of a complementary color but somehow I like the idea of this tone on tone so my problem then became that if it's tone on tone then once again the foreground will not really stand out so I decided to finish off this foreground by just adding a little bit more stamping and then also here is a little bit more gold paint just to add yeah, some kind of a vignette all around. And the next thing that I want to do is that I want to have this contrast between the blue yeah, foreground and the blue gel plate background. So here I'm now taking black cardstock by Tim Holtz, which was originally for the alcohol ink. However, I love this cardstock so much. It's so smooth, almost velvety. And it's quite expensive, so I mean here I just do this for demonstration so that you can see what I wanted to do here, just to add this little bit of a vignette around the blue background. But here I will show you now, get more out of expensive paper, because usually I don't just use it as a vignette as a whole, just because this yeah, black cardstock is quite expensive. So usually I have die cuts that I want to create here with black. As you can see here, I used it for a butterfly. And then I use the leftover as a border. So this way you just get more out of it. You get beautiful die cuts in black and this beautiful velvet black. And then you also have a nice frame. And speaking of frames, so the next thing we want to do now, once we assemble that, is that we have a look at the background. So we want to add more interest with stitches. And you can do this either with stands or with your sewing machine. It really depends how good you are with a sewing machine because I never did any sewing in my whole life. And I bought now a really, really cheap one just to try it. So at the end, there will be some examples where you can see real stitching, but totally wonky, like really, um, as my name suggests, messy paper crafting, it's messy. However, I really love it for this mixed media look. I mean, even if it comes out a little bit wonky and not perfect, I still think it looks great and gives some great interest. And then the next step, we want to match the background with the tag. So now that we have some kind of stitched border look around the gel press background, just again to add a vignette, now I also thought it would be nice to have a little bit more yeah, stamping and maybe the same colors that we used on the tag, just so that it somehow goes hand in hand. So I'm doing a little bit more stamping. I have my um, bottle top there and golden paint so that you can see how that would work. So I just dip the bottle top into the paint and then I just use it to add a little bit of highlights with gold and then some kind of black marks just again for more contrast. Here I'm just using some old Tim Holtz tool, but you could also use an old gift card or something just to have some black marks on there. And now I assemble the foreground and hope that it doesn't look too wonky, but somehow hopefully that it works all together. 
and I also added some kind of thread on top of the tag just so that the hole made some kind of sense for the tag. So I just used some different yarn and black and yellow and green I believe and yeah just so that the tag isn't just a tag but has some kind of purpose and I thought the stitched look or this kind of fake stitched look and the yarn that kind of works nicely together. And now I just assemble the whole card onto the card front and hope that this somehow fits. <laughs> but I love the Tim Holtz decal trimmer for that because I cut everything with that so it's not perfectly straight and that's on purpose. So when I assemble it then it's also not perfectly straight. So I think that's great for somebody like me who likes to work messy. And now the finishing touches, now I just had to decide on some kind of sentiment. I did this with the Tim Holtz sticker book where you get different sentiments in black and white. And here I just decided on a black one because I thought that fits nicely with the border. And as finishing touches, usually I have some acrylic paints here, these Posca pens, just to add a little bit more color if I think something is missing. And I love the gel pens to add this kind of glazed look, like in white and in black, just again gives it a little bit of sheen. And also I love to use stickers just for this glitter and I just think it highlights certain areas really well and yeah, it just looks, it looks a little bit more glamorous this way. And yeah, you can obviously go wild or don't have to go so crazy like I am here. You can also just keep it more simple. And here I'm just using some pearls by Studio Light in different colors, just again to add a little bit more shine. And here is the finished card. And then I have another one in red, so just a similar style. And yeah, once again, here are all the cards that I did in my mass production, the one that you just saw. Here I used different ephemera and no border because I thought here we had enough contrast. Then here I added some of this faux stitching with a stamp. And here I added now some real stitching. As you can see, super wonky, but I still think it's cute. Here the same, that's some real stitching I did for the first time ever on my sewing machine. Here again, some real stitching. Again, some more wonky stitching, but not too bad for somebody who just tried this out for the first time. And here a different result where you don't have a tag and just the ephemera with some other layers behind on the gel press background. And hopefully you like all these finished results. I hope that this was a lot of fun for you to watch it and maybe you give it a go as well. So thank you very much for watching and I see you next time.